Hello there and welcome to the channel. This is Nerd World History and today I'm continuing once again the exploration of the different individual Celtic tribes of pre-Roman Britannia. This time we're journeying to south eastern England, the most southern eastern point of the... again I'm probably going to butcher these pronunciations so apologies. It's either Canty or Cantiaci. I'm not too sure which one's actually correct. I think it's the Canty. That's the one I've always known them by, but during my research I found Cantiancy. So possibly the, it could be that. This tribe should be noted as well. That is the only area of Britain that still holds its name from its pre-Roman era, the area of Kent, at the very southern eastern part of England. Everywhere else, whether it was a Celtic tribe like the Trinovantes or someone that, that which is in East Anglia, obviously named after the Angles that invaded many centuries later, this isn't um, a thing that happens. I mean, in all the other areas, the tribes didn't really pass on the name. There's individual place names here and there, but generally speaking, as a as a county, there is nowhere else. It's the only one that passed on its name properly. I mean, Devon may have its origins with the Dabuni, actually, so I might be wrong. I'm probably yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that in another video. Before we get into this, I should tell you, this video is brought to you from my sponsor, Relentless Rebels, who are linked in the description below, but we'll talk about them a lot later in the video. And after that, like, share, subscribe, comment down below, and maybe check out my other channels that are in the description below, Nerd World, Nerd World Films, and a new one, Nerd World Order. If you like what you see on those channels, like, share, subscribe over there as well. And with that said, let's get into this video. Okay, so before I get into this video, you might have noticed there's been a slight break in the uploads. And that's because over the last week, I've been really ill and pretty much in bed. So not been able to do any videos. And as you can tell, I've been doing some redecorating, which is why it's such a mess behind me. Everywhere is changing in my house at the moment. But that's the reason it's taken me so long to get to actually uploading this video. Hence why there's also a bit of a costume change between shots here. But that said, let's get into the Canty or Cantiancy or the various other names that they have and which there are actually a few. They actually are one of the more rich and interesting tribes of our history, uh, described by Julius Caesar as being the most civilized of the tribes in Britannia, mostly because of their close links to the continent. The Canty or Cantiancy, we're going to call them Canty for the sake of this video, and stop me keep repeating that, are in the part of England that is closest to the continent. It is the main port of trade and one of the main places where goods from Gaul, Germany, and everywhere else come into Britain. As a result, they kind of got first dibs and everything, making them one of the wealthier and more prominent tribes. They have strong Belgic connections to various tribes on the continent, but this is mostly through trade. Now, one of the reasons Julius Caesar actually invaded Britannia was because of suspicious interactions between British tribes and those on the continent while he was fighting in Gaul. In other words, British mercenaries as well as other supporters of their Celtic cousins on the continent went to fight against the Romans. They sent logistical aid, manpower, food, resource, whatever, all to help in the war. Now, obviously the Gauls lost, but it didn't go unnoticed that the Britons were assisting them. Now, it's not exactly known exactly where the Romans landed, but they did invade in Britain, obviously, and Julius Caesar was the first one to do it, and he definitely landed in Canty territory, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So, skip back a little bit, and the Canty were first described in the 4th century BC by Greek explorers, actually referred to as the Canty in this area. So the name definitely goes back quite a few centuries. Now, they have, they get referenced a few more times, but generally speaking, that's the earliest reference to them. And of course, they are referenced again by Julius Caesar, as I mentioned. Now, when Caesar first landed, which will so we'll cover that. He took an expeditionary force into Britain. Now, should be, I should point out that much of this expeditionary force didn't make it. Romans were not a seafaring people, and the ships they did tend to build were built for the calmer waters of the Mediterranean, not the more unpredictable ones of the North Sea. And a storm destroyed or wrecked or damaged a lot of his ships, and he lost a lot of his men and equipment and horses and other things coming. And the Britons, who'd obviously been 
fighting Caesar as well on the continent, knew who he was and didn't want him to turn up, and as he tried to land troops, they attacked him on the beach. This was done by the Canti. They were the main antagonists that Caesar would have encountered. Now, one of the things the Britons were well known for, other than painting their bodies blue and apparently running into battle naked, which is is a load of bull. Come on. No. No, they didn't. But anyway, it's too cold, if for no other reason than that. Anyway, was chariot building. We were very, very, very good at building chariots. In fact, for chariot warfare, ancient Britons were the finest in antiquity. And that is saying something, because the Assyrians, the Egyptians, they were all really good at it. But British war chariots are, it is an arguable point to be fair, but it's still a good one, that our chariots were some of the finest engineered in antiquity, having even a form of suspension system, which no other chariots had at the time. Our tactics were also honed to perfection. Now to the Romans, the chariot was a bit of an antiquated weapon. A bit, almost, almost on the same sort of level of taking mounted cavalry up against a battle tank. But the tactics employed by the Britons were not to use the chariots in direct warfare. They were a supporting element, used to hop around the battlefield to bring exhausted troops from the front back to the back to recuperate, as well as to deploy additional troops to replace them. So they sort of ride in with two or three guys on the back with new spears and equipment who haven't been fighting jump off they start fighting the guys who are a bit knackered or injured they jump on and they get taken away for treatment and a couple of hours rest and then go back into the fray another thing is they would strafe the battlefield the battle lines and use slings bows and arrows spears whatever to basically harass the romans to keep their attention away from the main body of the attack as well all very effective tactics something we were very good at and we actually repelled caesar's first invasion attempt but he came back a couple of years later with a lot more determination and he was able to oust much of the cantis attempts to pushing back into the sea he was able to drive them from one of their main forts now one of the things getting back to the Canti and not really focusing so much on Julius Caesar's invasion directly they had close links to the Atribartes tribe but they were probably organized a bit more like the Cantianci who I've done a previous video on and they were not described they were described by Caesar as having four kings four leaders so they were likely a confederacy of smaller septs or sort of sub tribes making up one larger confederacy known as the Canti they also and I'm going to butcher this pronunciation I know I am they were generally considered enemies maybe not necessarily of the Romans but they were actually considered enemies of one of the neighboring tribes who they were much more interested in fighting called the Regency and I, I know I'm I know I'm butchering that pronunciation, I'll work on it, but basically there was another tribe that they didn't like more, and even when the Romans invaded proper a hundred years later, the Canti and the Chieftain were more interested in fighting their neighbour than they were in fighting the Romans. Probably why they didn't win. As they'd had some success, at least against Julius Caesar. Another interesting little side note about the Canti is the Romans in about... I think the year was 147, but I don't actually remember exactly where I read that, so it might be around 150 AD. The Romans were pushing north into what is now Scotland again, and they refer to, or at least make a reference to, a tribe called the Decanti. And the Decanti, or Decantianci, were believed to be related to the Canti probably refugees who fled north the meaning of that word mean uh, the, the believed translation of it is people who came from the canti and the canti so uh, the, the name canti itself has many believed meanings as well but sort of the breakdown of it, it's got something to do with living on the edge and singing so you know it's a bit of a weird one i've, I've read a few definitions of what the actual breakdown means <clears throat> I believe, and again, not a linguist, but I do believe I read that cant as a word in Welsh, and someone out there who speaks Welsh, please correct me on this because I think I know I'm not I know I'm not getting it quite right, but it means something like singing or song or something along those lines, which is where I think I'm getting that connection from and where I, I read it in someone actually breaking down what the ancient words mean in the ancient Proto-Celtic or Proto-Welsh languages of the Celtic period in that time period. 
because obviously the Britons, as they were known, who fled, were defeated and drove uh, westward by mostly by the Anglo-Saxons, ended up in what is now Cornwall and Wales, modernly. And the Canty would have been no exception to that. Anyway, different topic. Now, before I go any further, I just want to bring up my sponsor, Relentless Revels, who are one of my certainly my oldest sponsor, but also still offer many fine examples of Viking style jewelry, as well as other alternative styles of jewelry, all which come in these really nice little display cases. I recently bought one as a present for someone, myself, and as well, while I was at it, I bought myself an extra couple of them, which I was planning to wear in this video to show off, but because I've been ill and redecorating, I don't know where I actually put it, so I couldn't put it on. It's somewhere there, upstairs, who knows, it's somewhere, and so I can't wear it. But it's basically this really, really nice Thor's hammer, wolf clasp, sort of holding onto it with a circle. It's all gold and silver colors, really nice. And I think I have a picture of it that hopefully I have on the screen at this point. If that's something that you think you might like, or you think you might like to treat yourself or someone else, something that they might like, check them out in the link description below. Go to their website, have a look around, see if you like anything. If you do like anything when you reach checkout, use the promo code NERD20, all in capitals, and get yourself a 20% discount on the products. It's usually free postage. I think that applies to everywhere in the world, so pretty sure I'm right on that one. And with that said, let's get back to the video on the Canty. So where was I? I was up to... Basically, I will do... As I do individual breakdowns of the individual chieftains, I'm not going to really do it here, but the, in brief, there are different leaders referenced by Caesar, one of which he even kills, I believe, another one he takes captive. And it's likely that by around 30 AD, they had stopped being four little troublesome confederates and become one individual state with a singular chieftain. This was around the time of the founding, or not the founding of, but the establishment of their major capital, which is now the city of Canterbury, again deriving its name from these Celtic origins. This would become their capital evermore. Later, as I also mentioned in one of my other videos, there was an exiled chieftain of the Atrobates tribe called Epilus. Now, Epilus would travel through their enemy's territory after exiled from his own people, and he would arrive in the territory of the Canton. Now, I'm not entirely sure how Epilus managed to do this, because he was an exiled chieftain, but he must have had enough support, and as I said, there is plenty, mostly through trade and those things, evidence that the Canty and the Atrobates were quite closely linked. They were certainly not directly related as cultures, other than the fact that they're both Celtic, so they weren't like one was a sort of a sub-tribe or a spin-off from the other. That's not what it was, but they were close allies. And this was probably stemming from originally the trade with the Atrobates who lived in the Belgic region, as they had a lot of trade with the Belgic tribes on the continent. Now, probably due to this connection, Epilus found it relatively easy to come in and take a sort of popular uprising, and he took over, ousted the existing chieftain, became the new chieftain, and began minting his own coins, started his own dynasty, basically took over. It wasn't until a few a couple of generations later that they were actually fully then annexed by the Catavalloni tribe. And later they were defeated at the Battle of Medea by the Romans in the early stages of the invasion, but this was done with typical sneaky Roman tactics, also using Belgic mercenaries. The Battle of Medea is actually a very interesting battle that I may do a breakdown in the future, which I hope I will remember, because usually I make a note of these things when I decide I'm going to do it, but again, I don't know where my note has notes have gone for all these, this video list for me to tick things off and add things to, but anyway. Battle of Medea, very interesting video. It's going to be. It was an interesting battle. Now, the Canty, of course, were then conquered by the Romans in the 1st century AD, and a lot of Celtic traditions in that area would eventually phase out because obviously they were Romanized. Things like anything south of the Antonine Wall tended to phase out the whole dyeing your skin blue kind of thing. They used to paint their blue their skin blue with woad to make them look more fearsome in battle, make them stand out, but whatever. And this varied in how they would do it. They would mix it with different materials that included semen. I've read that they would also use that to sort of thicken it up. 
and sometimes they do it as patterns say a handprint or two handprints or something like that you know like the orakai or something or sometimes they just paint themselves all blue and they would quite often dye facial hair white as well so eh, they would look pretty distinctive but those kinds of traditions were wiped out by the romans south of the antenna world although they would carry on with the picts hence painted peoples the picts and the picts were basically celts and yeah the canty as i said they had a great deal of trade with the continent you had a lot of rich goods and a lot of domestically produced very impressive goods one of which includes and i hope i have a picture of this because i know it exists and i'm gonna have to probably look for an image of it a an actual very rare one in britannia we don't have many of these i think i believe there's only two actual examples and this is one of them of an actual helmet a war helmet from a warrior and this this to me dispels the belief that the ancient celts were stupid and didn't wear armor into battle armor was available chainmail remember was invented by the celts and is easier in some ways to make than plate armor so why then it probably expensive which is probably the reason everybody didn't have it the idea of every soldier having heavy armor was non-existent that's certainly non-existent but your warrior elites your chieftain really they don't they don't have at least a bit of armor i don't buy it i've never bought that especially when you find physical examples of things i mean things like the battersea shield can't be used as an example of armor protection because it's not the battersea shield there's no evidence it was ever used in battle it's too ceremonial too ornamental it was probably made as an offering to the gods that's my belief there's i, I could i could be wrong but I mean, look at the thing it's beautiful and it's really unlikely that thing was used in war i mean they might have done but i can't see it very much in the latin art style solid metal it's just near yeah. but there were it's certainly the idea then of a shield existed now the idea of say a wooden shield or maybe a shield made of thatch or something is probably a little bit more realistic and don't underestimate a thatch shield they work better than you would actually think put a bit of leather on them put some padding on them it's got you've got a cheap shield but it's, at long range it's going to use you know it's better than using your hand to block an arrow right anyway my point being these kinds of concepts and ideas were certainly available to them so why wouldn't they take advantage of them you wouldn't run into battle naked these people had a concept of tactics you're going to build you're going to do things like make elaborate swords and axes and bow and arrow and spears and all the rest of it to and use and train with slings and all that kind of build fortifications build the most technologically advanced war chariots in the ancient world and then do all that and not think to yourself to maybe put a, a bit of protection on your head to stop you just being instantly killed are we really to believe these people were that stupid i i don't think they were an experienced a young headstrong idiot maybe your average poor grunt maybe but your seasoned veteran your seasoned warrior someone that comes from the upper class who's got a bit more money a warrior elite certainly there was a warrior class so they weren't that they weren't that smart they they were that stupid were they i don't buy it could be wrong tell me in the comments below what you think were they really was it a religious thing was wearing armor against their religion it's, again it's possible not likely because then why would you make ceremonial ones you have so you've got a, a culture that's dedicated in many ways not dedicated to war but it's very warlike and they just don't it doesn't make sense i'm staying on that subject a little longer than i wanted to so let's move on now i'm gonna start to bring this video to an end because i'm gonna start to waffle and ramble and the sense i've already started to a little bit as i said i will explore some of the individual chieftains and rulers and some of the other events such as the battle of the day more extensively in future videos about the canty as they are a fascinating group with a long and very rich history and yeah they also as i said had good rivalries with some of their neighbors they were allies of the atribates but the riganti however you pronounce their name they weren't exactly friends and they seemed to be almost traditional enemies to the point where when the romans as i said invaded that they were still more interested in fighting them than they were in the romans 
and it's one of the many examples of why the Roman invasion was so successful when it really shouldn't have no business being. And it's a lot of it is because the tribes just simply couldn't put aside their differences anymore, like they did when Caesar invaded. <clears throat> and yeah, you mean you can make all the arguments you want that it was the kind of Lawney's fault for invading the Atrebates in the first place, and it was, but it was a violent time. The Romans still didn't need to invade and conquer Britain, and separate video again before I start rambling on. So there we have the Canti, or Cantiancy, or some of the other various names I've read for them, which actually may technically be a reference to the individual, because there were four rulers, so therefore four septs, four sub-tribes. It may, it may be the Canti and the Cantiancy actually genuinely were two separate tribes. And then you of course have the Decanti, of which there is pretty much nothing known. They were a Pictish tribe from the very far north, and exactly who they were is unknown, but they possibly were related to the Canti who had fled north, really far north apparently, to escape the Romans, probably literally going as far north as they could to hop over the border and get away from the fighting. Maybe it was all the, um, you know, injured, the elderly and the children who were sent away, who knows. So there we have it, the Canti. Let me know in the comments below what you think about them and what have I missed? Because I know I have skipped, and I know I have it because I know people are going to say it, I have skipped some bits and pieces from their history and their story. It's particularly though it's all stuff in relation to individual chieftains, which as I said I will do individual videos on, or at least videos on the, the groups of them, such as I'll do one video on the four chieftains collectively that ruled the county when Caesar invaded. And etc. I'll do a video on the chieftain who was in charge when Epilus took over, things like that. Who was the first chieftain? Who was the chieftain when the Romans invaded the second time? Well, third time technically, the Claudian invasion. I'll do those videos separately, so events connected to them, not really going to go so much into. But as I said, these were a tribe who were first identified in about 350 BC, and I, I will try and remember to get the actual exact dates and put that on the screen, hopefully. But, yeah, and they were known in antiquity from that time going forward as Britain came out of the murky history of unknown into the known world at the time. Well, that said, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Check out my other channels and all my social media links that are in the description below, and bye-bye.